So greetings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it is Monday, Thursday. I'm Pastor Ed Thomas. This is Spirit of Joy. Mary Louise and I welcome you to our home. Uh, we're going to do our Monday, Thursday service from here. And as we do, I always thought as a kid, what, what is Monday, Thursday? Well, Monday comes from the same word as mandate. It's the day of the mandate to do this in remembrance of me. Now, as we worship tonight, we're going to start with our Order of Compline. We hope that you're joining us many nights a week online as we worship together as a church, as we pray. We're going to start with that same basic order, which is a greeting, a hymn, confession, and a psalm. But we're going to add a part to it tonight, actually two parts. We are going to finish the, serve, the service uh, with communion. But before we get to communion, we're going to talk about the Last Supper and what all of this meant for Jesus in his life. So as we begin today, I want to tell you just a really quick story. When I went to Israel the first time, I had a goal in mind. I was only going to buy one souvenir, and it was going to be for the whole family. And it was a gift from Mary Louise, and I wanted an authentic Passover plate, not a, a souvenir kind of, but I wanted something ideal and a little bit antique. And so I found in a, in a store an old Seder plate. Uh, it's not real fancy, although the it's very intricate when you look at it very closely. It's, it's just made out of tin and kind of tapping and, and all of that on it. But it's very special to us, and every year at Easter, Easter Sunday lunch, we commemorate the Passover in our family. And as we do that, we think of Jesus' sacrifice for us. Now, we want to begin by looking at this Passover service. Uh, and first, we're going to start this, the Compline portion. It's the Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a peaceful end. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praises to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning. Your faithfulness at the close of the day. our sins to God. Gracious Lord, I, I confess, confess that, that I have sinned against you this day in thought, word, and deed. Some of my sin I know, some is known only to you, and for all of which I am ashamed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for your forgiveness. Turn my heart, O God, and deliver me so I may rest in peace. By the mercy of Almighty God, we are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Our psalm for tonight uh, is Psalm 118. It's part of what's called the Great Hallel. Uh, Jesus would have said this at the Last Supper that night. And I want you to listen to these words with that event in mind. And not just that event, but his coming crucifixion within the next 24 hours. Let us pray together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? It is better to take refuge in the Lord. 
than to put confidence in mortals. They surrounded me on every side. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live. And recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely. But he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. That I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now for a reflection tonight, we're going to give you a glimpse of the Last Supper, starting with what the Passover meal would have looked like for Jesus and his disciples when they celebrated. We'll also celebrate it from a messianic perspective. That is, from the perspective that Jesus has fulfilled the Passover. Lastly, we want to share with you how Jesus actually changed the Passover from the old Passover to a new Passover. The word Seder is Hebrew for order. The Seder meal, that is the Passover meal, is a well-ordered sequence of actions organized around four cups of wine. Join us as tonight we walk through the order and meaning of this sacred meal. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has commanded us to light the festival lights. Join us in prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in Jesus, the Messiah, the light of the world. Then the leader of the house offers a blessing over each child, something like this. In our house, we, we used to say something like, Paul, Jay, Robbie, may the Lord make you like Ephraim and Manasseh who received the blessing from their grandfather, Jacob, and who led lives honoring to God. Now, this is the first cup, the cup of sanctification. It reminds us that God will make us holy through the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. This time, the food of the Seder meal was brought to the table, and the head of the family would start explaining the meaning and significance of each part. For example, the, the carpus or the greens remind us of, of the hyssop that was used to apply the blood of the Passover lamb to the homes of the Israelites in Egypt sparing the lives of the firstborn sons. Blessed are you, O Lord, Lord our God, God King, King of the, the universe, universe, who creates the fruit of the earth. Now, this is what is called the matzah tash. It is? It's a three-part <laughs> three pouch. Each contains a board of matzah, unleavened bread. Kind of hard to see, but there's three pouches and three pieces of matzah in each one. Historically, the Jews called it the unity. For believers in Jesus, the unity speaks to the eternal mystery of the triunity of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One yet three, three yet one. Now, historically, the Jews would take the middle matzah symbolic of Father, Son, the middle, and Holy Spirit, and it is broken in two, and half of it is returned to the matzatash. The other half is now called the afakoman. It is wrapped 
in linen cloths and it is going to be hidden for a time. Later, families make a game of this. They let the children go searching for the hidden Afikoman, but it will be needed later for a special use. Now, the remaining half of the bread is called the bread of affliction. We bless this bread, praying that the people in affliction discover freedom, peace, and eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Now, it is speculated that this is perhaps the time in the meal where Judas left to betray Jesus. We read in Mark 14, When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened and one by one asked him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he said one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The second kind, a cup of wine, was poured, but was not yet drunk. This is the cup of proclamation. The proclamation of God's saving acts are prompted at this point with the youngest child asking, why is this night different from all other nights? The head of the family would answer this question by retelling scripturally the story of the exodus from Egypt by the Israelites into the promised land. The second thing that is proclaimed is the significance of the main items needed to celebrate the Passover and what each means. The lamb, the bitter herbs, and the unleavened bread. Now, the Passover lamb was God's old covenant provision for freeing the Israelites from bondage in Egypt. Jesus is the eternal Passover lamb. He's God's new covenant provision to free us from the bondage to sin. The unleavened bread reminded the Israelites of their leaving Egypt in haste while not even, with not even time for their bread to rise. Jesus is the eternal bread of life, who was without leaven, the leaven of sin. The bitter herbs reminded Israel of their bitter days in slavery. We remember that we are all in slavery to sin until we let Jesus uproot the sin in our lives and set us free. Also on the plate are the Heroseth and the roasted egg. The haroset is a mixture of apples, honey, and nuts, and though it is sweet, it symbolizes the mortar that went into the slave labor of building the cities for Pharaoh. It is sweet because God wants us to remember that even in the most bitter of our labors can be sweet, especially when we know that our redemption is near. The roasted egg came after the time of Jesus. It is a continuing sign that the sacrifices of atonement uh, had stopped with the destruction of the temple. For Christians, the egg is a symbol of new life. Jesus the Messiah is the final sacrifice for sin, and he is the living temple. The second cup is then raised, and drinking we pray, Lord, we praise you for bringing us from bondage to freedom, from despair to hope, from sorrow to joy. You redeemed Israel from slavery in Egypt, and through Jesus you free us from sin and death. And now, at this point, God's people ate the meal. Historically, this was a long, festive time at the table with family and friends. And as the, the evening would draw meal. to the close, and the evening the too, <laughs> as the meal would draw to a close, <laughs> the children would now go in search of the Afikoman. Remember it had been hidden? For centuries, the Jews had really no explanation for why this middle piece of the triunity that was broken 
wrapped in linen cloth and hidden or buried? As children of Jesus, the Messiah, we know precisely why the second piece of this triunity, Jesus, the bread of life, was broken, wrapped in linen cloths, buried, and rescued from its hiding place. It was certainly Jesus's body that was and continually is broken for us. The Afikoman then is unwrapped from its linen cloth. It is taken and it is broken and it is shared with the participants. This is where it appears in scripture that Jesus changed the Passover to institute a new covenant. Luke 22 says, And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. During this time, kind of still in that context of the second cup, and still in the context of the meal, Jesus is proclaiming a new meaning for this unleavened bread of the Passover. It is suddenly now his body broken for us. And at this point, the eating of the meal is considered finished. And the third cup is lifted. It is known as either or both the cup of redemption and the cup of blessing, which is poured and which is drunk right after the meal is finished. And Jesus again changes the liturgy of the old Passover to the liturgy of the new Passover. Hear the words of scripture. Again after supper, he took, again after supper, after supper, he took the cup. The cup of redemption. And he said, this cup is now the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we partake of communion, it is always the cup of redemption, the blood of Christ, which redeems us. And so we bless the third cup. Blessed are you, O God, God King, King of the, of the universe, universe, who creates the fruit of the vine and who poured out your blood to redeem the world. The Jewish Passover then concludes with two actions. The first is the singing of the great Hallel. It is the singing of the Psalms 115 through 118. And then the drinking of the fourth and final cup of the Passover. The drinking of the last cup of wine then signifies the completion of the Passover meal. Jesus' Passover was different. We read in Mark that at the conclusion of the Passover, Passover of Jesus, Jesus says, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So, did Jesus, not drinking the fourth cup, did he conclude the Passover? Did he complete it? Did he drink from that fourth and final cup? From Scripture, it does not appear that Jesus drank the final cup at the table. According to Scripture, after the singing of Psalm 118, Jesus and his disciples went directly to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane. There's no mention of him drinking the final cup. Thus, we must ask, did Jesus complete the Passover in the upper room? In the garden, Jesus prayed repeatedly for this cup to pass from him. Yet he also prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. Could he be praying and referring here to the fourth cup of the Passover, the cup of praise, which would complete the sacrificial meal, the meal at which he himself 
would become the sacrifice? The author, Brant Petrie, writes, Jesus had just celebrated the Last Supper in which he identified his own body as the sacrifice of the new Passover. He had also just identified the third cup, the cup of redemption, as his own blood about to be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus was now implicitly identifying himself as the new Passover lamb. The implication of this self-identification is sobering. By the time this new Passover is finished, Jesus will be dead. That's what happens to Passover lambs. They don't make it out alive. But there's one more act to the divine drama. As they nailed Jesus to the cross, they offered him wine mixed with frankincense to dull his senses. But Jesus refused it. Nevertheless, as Jesus approached the death on the cross, Scripture tells us, John 19, After this, knowing that all was finished, he said to fulfill the Scripture, I thirst. A bowl of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and died. On the cross, Jesus drank the fourth and final cup of the Passover, meaning that Jesus was the perfect crucified Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and himself was the new sacrifice of the new Passover. Jesus was and is the Lamb who was slain. And as he drank the cup of praise on the cross, Jesus inaugurated the kingdom of God. And now, if you're following along like the Jews, the Passover has finally ended. Now, Jews, historically, hoping historically for the soon coming of the Messiah, joyfully end each Passover celebration with the words, next year in Jerusalem. We too end our Passover with the drinking of the fourth cup, the cup of praise, and a cheer joyfully anticipating the second coming of our Lord Jesus saying, next year in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Now, it's going to be our turn to commune. And as we do that, I just invite you to stop and, and bow your head. And let us remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, before you commune at home, we're going to close our service tonight with the singing of a communion hymn, which is going to lead right into a hymn that begins to point us toward all else that begin to happen. Go to Dark Gethsemane, uh, the cross, journey with us in song and, and journey with Jesus as he takes some of those final steps. Let us pray.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As we conclude, we invite you to, to join just at your home in communion, in prayer, perhaps reading the 22nd Psalm, which is a psalm of prophecy, which points powerfully to the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, traditional for Monday, Thursday. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.